Hello and welcome. In today's exciting episode, I am using up yet more leftover fabric to make this beautiful blue dress. It's perfect. 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 Perfect jacket. So I am once again using up my fabric leftovers. I wasn't sure which colour I was going to go with. There's quite a lot to choose from. There's the aqua and the turquoise, the pink up the back. I'm still kind of liking the idea that I have the pink. And then there's all these ones here. Oh gosh, there's so many. It's a little overwhelming. I do like the idea of the black and white ones. But um, yeah, I can't decide whether to put the grey in there or not or whether to put the grey with the sage green ones. So I think we'll leave that and go with the periwinkle blue. It's sort of, I call it Cinderella blue. But yeah, I've they're different than the other pale blue ones. These are sort of more, there's a touch of purple in there. Anyway, so they're quite straightforward, these ones. A lot of them were um, fat quarters. So yeah, for some unknown reason, I just bought them when they're on sale because apparently I didn't have enough leftover fabric. I needed some more. So anyway, I sewed them all together and here I'm showing you I've done the, so I'm going to make a vintage dress. See how this one here, the skirt has three tiers. The top tier is two yards round. The middle is four yards round and the bottom one is a whopping eight yards round. So that's what I'm going to do with this, hopefully. So yeah, that's how much fabric I need. Oof. And they're a foot wide. So I've already cut the bodice so that I wouldn't accidentally forget to do that. Then I've done the first two. So that one has two yards. This one has four yards. It's a big loop. I've just sewn it together. So now all I've got left to do is the eight yards one. And there does not, not look like there's going to be enough fabric left to do the eight yards one. But I have some periwinkle sort of this blue fabric I was going to save it for um, maybe a shirt or something but I think I'll there's not quite enough for a long sleeve shirt and I really wanted a long sleeve shirt so this fabric here so what I'm going to do is see how far I get with these ones here because I've got so many daisies I think I'll um yeah I'm sort of putting daisy then non-daisy daisy then non-daisy that's kind of my rough pattern it's very rough <laughs> And yeah, so I'll use up all those and then I'll cut up that extra fabric I have. I think I have 20 extra daisy bits rather um, after I've done all the rest. So I'll need to cut the leftover fabric into 20 bits as well. And here we go. I did all that and it took me the better part of a day to sew all these leftover bits of fabric into usable lengths that I can now make the dress from. I do have like four bits of small fabric, these ones here, but now that I have such a tiny amount, I can put them in with the pale blue and it won't look so weird But because they're such small slender bits because just in general, this periwinkle blue is such an intense, I mean, it's kind of a light blue, but it's also got this intensity about it. So I didn't really want to mix it with the pale blues just in general. Plus, obviously, I had enough for a dress. Now all I have to do is oh, have a snack. But um, what's left to do is I have to iron these three loops of fabric and I have to, yeah, pop those over in the light blue section. But I also have to even out the edges of these three. I've, I've sort of evened them out as I went along, but now I just have to go along with the ruler and make sure they're all just a foot wide or 30 centimetres wide and all nice and even around there so that when I sew them together, the dress won't be all wonky and the seams will be straight. And this is what I meant by Cinderella Blue. 
um, there's this vintage, like really, really old children's book of a ladybird, vintage ladybird, Cinderella. And yeah, she has, in this version of Cinderella, she has three dresses. The first one is pink, which I don't really like because it's too similar to one of the ugly sisters' dresses. Here you can see the two sisters, they're dressed up for the ball and they're picking on her, laughing at her before they go, because of course. And one of them's definitely wearing pink. And then here is Cinderella in her first dress and in the background you can clearly see the two sisters one of which is wearing the pink. I mean their bodices are different but still and the other one is wearing blue which is the colour that Cinderella wears on the second night. Easy dress two and dress three ball gowns for her. I love the blue one with the silver um, embellishment but I would take away the red bow and I love the gold and silver one for the third night. That one is just spectacular. And it goes well with glass slippers. I even like her Cinder's dress. I think it's beautiful. Anyway, so that is what I mean when I say Cinderella blue. So now I'll go do the ironing and trim these down. Okay, I didn't actually have to trim that much off. I thought I was going to have to trim more. But anyway, so we are ready to go. I just, you know, glossed over the whole ironing thing. I'll do it later. So I've got my three layers, my three tiers. So first up, I will pin the first tier and the second tier together. And we'll just set aside the third one for the moment. And I'll just put four pins in the bottom of the top tier and four pins in the top of the second tier. And then I'll match them up and then I'll sort of pleat down from there. So I've got my pins in. So it's one in the centre front, one in the centre back, and two on the exact sides. And the one that's the different colour is um, the one that is the centre front, because obviously you want your centre front to look symmetrical. So here we are. I'm about halfway through doing it. And yeah, so I pinned the four pins, and then I found the halfway point between them so then I pinned eights and once those are done I sort of go around in the eight different sections and I do the first pin the last pin and then I do sort of half then half again and sort of once I've pinned them down then I pleat them down. So once you pin them down, you still got one side is baggy because obviously the second tier is twice as much fabric as the first tier. And then you sort of fold it sort of the same way you do hospital corners when you're um, folding a sheet. Sort of push all the excess to one side and then you neatly fold it back over itself and you pin it into place. And you just do that along every single one and yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, I, I find it nice and soothing. It's, you know, you take chaos and you make order. I, I, I like it. Anyway, and eventually you work your way around the entire skirt. And once you've pinned it all into place, then it is time to machine sew it. So I machine sew it once and taking the pins out, one pin at a time out as I go. And then I go around a second time to um because these are heavy skirts you just want a second layer of stitching in there to reinforce it and to hold the weight this is the back i um didn't check what the pleats looked like from the front so all the daisy fabric is sitting out the front but luckily on the other side of the skirt so the front you can't really see much of the daisy fabric at all so this is going to be the back of the second tier and yeah, so he can sort of see the front. And when I put the third tier on, I'm going to be pleating the daisy fabric underneath on every single pleat. So that way, um, yeah, you won't see as much of the daisy fabric. It's not that I don't like it. It's just a lot. <laughs> so yeah, here we go. And it sort of looks more like a denim dress than I thought it would. It's weird. I think it's the tile sort of pattern one that does it for me. Anyway, um, yeah, so these are the three tiers. I've just sort of pinned the skirt on the front of the mannequin. So, you can, yeah, and here we go. Uh, so, yeah, as you can see in the third lace, I sort of pleated down the daisy fabric because I knew I had an extra amount in the third tier. So, oh, so obviously I sewed the second and third tier after I sewed the first and second tier together. Yeah, I really like this. I wasn't sure about these fabrics. I wasn't sure at all, but I really like it. 
I mean, it was interesting to work with the black and white fabrics on the black and white dress, but I like this blue one. It's sort of more in the same vein as the pink and green one and the green, well, actually quite like the green one. And yeah, I really like it. It's, I guess it's subtle, but it's also really nice and colorful. And up close, you can really, really see all the different fabrics. Anyway, it is time to leave this skirt pinned on the mannequin and get out the pieces for the bodice and make that up. So we have this sort of shadowy flower one for the front, the um, sort of snow white flower one for the back and plain blue for the lining. So this is a sleeveless bodice, so I'm using the burrito method to make it, um, which means you sort of do everything one tiny step at a time so that everything is in the right order. So first we do, and you sort of work from the top down. So you pin the shoulders together, machine sew the shoulders together. Um, so the left and the right on the outer, the left and the right on the lining, that's it. And then the next step is to you lay down flat the outer bodice with the print up and then you lay down the lining bodice, so right sides together. Then we're doing the neckline now. So you pin them at the shoulders, at the shoulder seams to get them perfectly level. And then you pin them centre front to centre front and back to centre back to centre back and then you fill in the rest of the pins. Then um, once that's done, you machine sew that and then you clip the curves so um yeah obviously just check that your machine sewing is good and there's no glitches and then you clip the curves carefully all the way around because it's a curved seam so you want it to sit right when you're turning it out so then you turn it out and the neckline is done if you like to machine sew your under stitching now is the time to do it before you do the armholes but I do mine by hand afterwards. But yeah, if you machine sew, this is the point that you do it. So um, we'll do the right one first and the upper sleeve first. So you splay it open on the right and then you roll the left side in and then you pull the lining of the right side here over the top of the left side and make it meet the right side outer. So, and then you pin that shoulder seam together and then once they're perfectly level, then you pin the back half and then you pin the front half. Okay, now it's ready to machine sew. So you carefully machine sew your armhole and then you clip the seam allowance down by, so cut it down by half and then you clip the curves, so little notches all the way around so that it will sit properly when you turn it out. Once that's done, so see how all the left side is rolled in here. So we have to pull it through this right um, shoulder strap. So slowly and carefully just pull the whole of the front bodice through. And there we go. One side is done beautifully. And you didn't have to do any hand sewing. I only recently discovered the burrito method. So I still think it's fabulous because I used to hand stitch everything, hand finish everything. This is so much quicker. It's a little confusing, but it's so much quicker. Okay. So now we do the left side. So you splay it open again, and then you roll the right side in, and then you bring the lining over, pin it, machine sew it, um, cut off the excess, clip the curve, turn it out. And now we've done both sides. Yay. So the only thing left to do with this bodice is to sew the sides together. So you pin them, then machine sew them. And once you've machine sewn them, then you have to press the seams flat so that they sit under the arm correctly without being too bulky. And then you turn it out. I also do a machine um, line of stitching around the lining. You're not going to use that until right at the end as a guide to do the hand stitching. But while the bodice is still just a little bodice and doesn't have the big heavy skirt attached, it's so much easier to sew it now. So here we go. We have the bodice. This is so sweet. I love it. It is time that the bodice and the skirt met. So we'll put them on the mannequin. I um, This is a skirt. It's, yeah. It's very cute. Actually, I really like them as a set. I think I'm definitely going to make this a dress. But each time I do this, I'm so tempted to like make the top a top and make the skirt of the dress an actual skirt, like just add a, a waistband to it. 
it would look very cute. But I'm kind of in the mood to make dresses at the moment. But maybe like in a year or so, I'll undo them again. Anyway, it is time to attach the bodice to the dress. So we will do that now. Take these two off the mannequin and pin them together and sew them. So normally when I pin a bodice to a pleated down skirt, I pin them at four points, center front, center back, side and side. But with this one, I wanted to pleat down the daisies so that the daisies in the top row are sort of hidden and all the other different fabrics are shown. So yeah, I pleated that down independently and I just left the center back one open so that it would fit all the way around. And then I just attached that to the bodice. Obviously, if you just want to sew the skirt, the pleats into the skirt first, then attach it to the bodice, that would make it easier. But I'm fine with just the billions of pins. So, yep, everything is finally in place. And then I machine sewed it and then I reinforced it because this is a pretty heavy weighted skirt. And so, yeah, you can see the two lines there and they evened out pretty well. There's two daisies at the center back um, that you can see, but apart from that, it went pretty well. So now the last thing you have to do is attach the lining of the bodice. And um, obviously it's there to cover the raw seams, but it's also there to carry the weight of the skirt. So you push all your skirt seams up because you want them inside the lining of the bodice. And then once they're up, you pull the lining down. And this is why I machine sewed that line previously. It's where the, um, the outer bodice, it's this sew line here is the exact same point. So just fold the raw edges under and now your lining bodice and your outer bodice are going to be the exact same length. So you just pin this edge right on this sew line of the, you know, where the skirt is attached to the outer bodice. And then, yeah, pin all the layers together. And then you go around and you hand sew it. And that just helps. You can sort of see the tension here already. It just helps the outer bodice. Instead of the outer bodice carrying all the weight of the entire skirt, now it's shared the waist, so it's half the weight because the lining bodice is carrying half the weight and the outer bodice is carrying the other half of the weight. And it just makes your dress age much better. And also it's obviously a lot neater on the inside as well. So it does take a little while to do the hand sewing and it's frustrating because it's the last thing, but it, you know, it makes your dress age well. So here we are, it's totally done. And um, yeah, most of the daisies in the top tier, you can't sort of see them. When I turn around to the back, you can sort of see the center back ones. And this is it from the side. I'll put a sash on in a second. But yeah, this is it from the back. And there is so much fabric in this. Oh my goodness. And I just thought as a nod to this Cinderella dress that I really love, I'd put a red sash on this. I wasn't really expecting to like it, but this is so adorable. I am absolutely going to wear it this way. It is so sweet. I love it. As a child, I really didn't like the red bows on that Cinderella dress. But, you know, now I'm older and wiser with more mature tastes, I guess. I don't know. I think it looks cute. And this is it, the 12 shot. So I just sort of pinned the um, ends of it out. And because that last tier was like nine and a half yards or something, ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. Instead of eight, I ended up having enough for nine and a third or nine and a half. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, it's just gorgeous, this dress. It is so cute. Um, in person, you can really see all the different fabrics. So you can see exactly how much work is in there. I think when you see the wide shots of in the video, you can't really see how many different fabrics there are in there. I mean, I could have done a pieced bodice as well, I guess, but I don't know. I kind of like it just being that solid sort of shadow flowers fabric. I think it's sweet. Yeah, I haven't hemmed it yet. Some of you keep complaining that I make too many things. I do you, th do you know how many dresses I have that haven't been hemmed yet? This is the problem with being quite good at hand sewing. You're like, 
yeah, I don't need to practice. I'll just leave it until I want to go out. So then like every time you want to go out, you're like, great, now I have to do an hour of hand stitching before I can leave the house. Yeah, that's probably too much information, isn't it? Well, anyway, here is my dress with the lovely red bow. I'm converted. I, I like blue, this periwinkle blue with red bow now. Maybe it's because there's no silver. I don't think silver would go well with these. Anyway, I guess she wears a glass slippers. That would be silver. Yeah, I don't have any silver shoes. Don't have any plans to buy any silver shoes or spray paint any of my existing collection silver. Anyway, that is it for this video. I was just thinking I, I sort of have a theme for each month and I haven't worked out my themes for each month next year. So I was thinking, you know how there's like a gazillion Cinderella movies? I thought maybe I can like make a dress from each, you know, pick one movie for each month, each week or each episode and do something around that. Have a Cinderella month. I don't know. I don't really like the message of that movie. Some guy will save you, but you, you know, have to marry him as thanks. It's not the most progressive thing. Anyway, this is the dress I made. I absolutely love it. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've been inspired to make a, well, if you like a Disney movie, a Disney dress of your own, or uh, just if you want, um, read fairy tales as a kid and there was a, one illustration that you absolutely loved, make, well, not exact replica, but something inspired by that because this dress totally brings me joy. It's absolutely adorable. Anyway, thanks again for watching and yeah, happy sewing.